Hi everybody, I'm Paul Snyder and I'm the Undergraduate Chair of Transportation Design at the College for Creative Studies. Today we're going to learn how to draw a couple different kinds of cars. Let's get started. So we're going to start out with some side views today because side views are easy to draw and you can do a lot of different kind of proportions of vehicles. Um, before you get into a perspective, it's good to have an idea of what you're trying to achieve in your perspective and a side view drawing of a, of a vehicle of some kind will give you a guide uh, as you're developing your perspective drawing. So, I don't need my triangle yet. I'm actually gonna sit down because I'm drawing smaller. I like to draw uh, bigger when I'm standing up. Uh, one of the best ways uh, to think about a good um, scale and proportion of a vehicle is to put three wheels in between your wheelbase. So you have your front wheel, your rear wheel, and three wheels in between. Now we won't draw those or darken those in uh, in the final drawing, but it helps us capture the proportion. So on a sedan, traditionally you have like a longer hood and um, a long roof, maybe a short front end. These days with electric vehicles, the proportions can be just about anything you want. Um, but uh, traditionally, sedans have a, a nice long hood and a, and, a, and a longer rear overhang. So I'm going to do a whole page of these, which is a good way of loosening up, just kind of, you can see I'm trying to draw from my shoulder and not from my wrist, because if I try and draw from my wrist, it's going to get very sloppy. And we have a term in art school, it's called chicken scratch, and we want to stay away from the chicken scratch, right? We want long sweeping lines like that. Stay loose and have fun with it. So this one's kind of cool, kind of dynamic. So we're going to do a, um, a sports car. We're actually going to do a hypercar, which is um, probably the fastest version of sports cars. Um, we're going to start out with a ground line and we're going to start out with side views because side views are a great way to sort of get your thoughts down on paper before you get into something more complex like a perspective drawing. The main thing I'm going to stress here is just keep it really simple with as few lines as possible. So we're going to start out with a circle, that's our front wheel, and I'm going to put two and a half wheels between my two uh, front wheel and my rear wheel and my rear wheel is actually going to be just a little bit bigger than my front wheel because it's going to be a hypercar. Okay I'm going to mark off a little bit of area above my front wheel. This is where my fenders are going to be and in a hypercar the passengers are sitting well, the driver, I should say, is sitting between the front axles, so the windshield is really far forward. And it's very, very low. The guys in these race cars are practically sitting on the, on the ground. And front ends are a little bit longer because uh, they suck up a lot of air to feed the engine and the radiators. All right. So there's just the silhouette, right? I think if we can get the silhouette down, we're in really good shape. We could try different proportions. There's my front wheel. Let's try one with a longer wheelbase and see how that goes. But it's going to have a bigger rear wheel. And nice continuous flowing lines that go from the front to the rear of the car. It's going to have very, very fast windshield again. Hypercars are cars that race at Le Mans, which is uh, one of the most famous races uh, in the history of racing. This one doesn't look too fast. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of like this one better, the shorter wheelbase, right? Okay, let's do a couple more. Just stick with this. this small wheel in the front. One, two, two and a, this one's just going to have two and a half again, or thereabouts. A little bit of space over the fenders, over the wheels for the fenders. Some expressive lines in there. 
and the windshield. Now what could be happening back here is, uh, you know, there's a lot of ground effects on race cars, so that could be a spoiler back there. Okay. Um, all right, so let's start a perspective. Let's try this one here. That should be fun. You need two things to do a brewer grid. Nice big sheet of paper here is, is a great start, but you need a triangle and a ruler. You could get away with just the ruler, but I like to use both. All right, so the grid is gonna give us perspective, right? Perspective makes things look three-dimensional uh, because they converge towards vanishing points. Lines converge towards vanishing points, just like on a railroad track. And things get smaller, which is foreshortening as they uh, get closer to the horizon line. So that's what we're trying to affect here by using this Brewer grid. So in order to start, um, we're gonna start with a a vertical line, we're going to use the edge of our paper as a guide for where a vertical is and the edge of the paper on top and bottom for where horizontal is. Now this is going to be a low car, right? As we've already established this thing is, is really low. So we're not going to use, we could probably do two, two perspective drawings here, but we're just going to put one in the middle. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing is we need two lines that are gonna set up our perspective. The first one is gonna be almost horizontal, but not quite. You see how that's not quite parallel to the edge of the paper? And this one will be quite a bit more angled than that one. See, they're very different. We could even go a little bit more if we want. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, then we need a ver oh, sorry, a horizontal line that passes through both those lines. I'll just go ahead and, and draw the horizontal all the way through. And that gives us a point here and a point there. And then we project those two points up with verticals. Okay, and then on this side where there's, there's gonna be uh, more of a side view here, I'm gonna choose another line, it cannot be parallel it, can, it has to converge. Converging means getting closer as it goes away off the page. And uh, I'm going to put it about right there. Okay, so that's converging quite a bit. This line here, I'm just going to darken it for you. And this line here are converging to the vanishing point. Now, I have another point here that I just created with that line crossing this line, and I'm gonna project that across with a horizontal, as carefully as I can, and I get a point there. Now, I, I have two points here that I have to finish my Brewer grid simply by connecting those two points. So as you can see, these lines are converging, and so are those lines converging off the page, and that's exactly what perspective drawing does. Now, I might, I might say to myself, you know, I need more guidelines because there's going to be, you know, a lot of different elements of my car here. So in order to create more guidelines, you simply divide these verticals into equal segments. So I'm going to take the, the one in the middle here, measure it. Your dimensions could be different, but mine here are eight and a half inches. So uh, that makes four and one quarter inch. And then half of one, four and one quarter is two and one eighth. So I'm breaking this line down into four segments. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now I have to do these and those measurements will be different. This is six and three quarters, which makes three and three eighths, um, and then half of three and three eighths, one and a half, three sixteenths. Okay, and I'll do the same over here.
Okay, now I'm just going to connect. Oops, that last one was wrong. Okay, now I'm just going to connect those points and you'll see we get a really cool perspective grid which is much much easier than plotting out vanishing points. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of space over here for my side view and it's going to converge much more quickly on my rear view, or sorry, the front end is going to be on this side. This will be my, my side. All right, now that I have my, my grid ready, I can now start sketching my car into the grid. And like I said, I'm going to go with this one here. We'll see how that goes. The important thing here is to not be too critical with yourself because you're just starting out. Try and have fun with it. All right, uh, so my car needs wheels. I'm gonna start out putting a couple of wheels on here. I'm gonna move over to my bigger marker. You guys can draw with pencil, but because I want the camera to really see my drawing here, I'm using marker. All right, let's put a big fat wheel here. It's almost a circle, but not quite. And very lightly. I think I'm going to do just a couple more construction sort of. I don't know if you guys can see these, but I'm drawing two wheels, three wheels, and then my third wheel is going to be one, two, and a half. And a little bit bigger than that one, just like my side view. Okay, so I have my wheel set up here in my grid. You can see this one's quite a bit bigger than that one. Okay. And then I have my fenders here, much higher there. And now I can start using some of these lines over here as a guide for my front end. As you can see, there's one continuous line that goes underneath the car. Let's start with that. Try and draw from your shoulder. There's be a little bit of plan view there. And I'm gonna use these lines now as guides. See how this line is somewhat parallel in perspective to these guidelines that I've already drawn on there. And let's say my front end is going to be nice and long. There's probably going to be a radiator in there and room for the guy's legs. Okay. And then once I've start to establish some of my side view on this plane, which I'll do now. I can use these guidelines to project it in depth. Okay, I think we're doing all right here. Now I have that spoiler there. Let's put a spoiler. It'd be ground effects here. Let's make it uh, not quite that high. So that's my side view. And then going to the other side of the car. Okay, it's got a big spoiler. All right, now um, we have our scoop here. Let's put our scoop on there. Let's use the chisel point, which is a really nice way to get thick and thin lines. And some lines that are passing through. From here, we can start to add a lot of detail if we like. Um, you know, one way or another, people have to get in and out of this thing, so we need doors. Um, in order to give the illusion of a door, we simply put some very light lines called part lines. The door part is separate from the body part. And the door parts also give us an opportunity to draw sections. This is 
probably going to be like a gullwing, you know, like a Countach style door. All right. So this is pretty good. Um, I have a lot of construction lines on here. Normally I wouldn't be drawing with a marker uh, first, you know, straight out of the gate, but I am here. Let's see, let's get a couple of wheels on here. Yeah, we got the tires. Let's get wheels on here. That's kind of a fun thing to do. Find the center and uh, project it back. So the center is here but I want to give the illusion of depth, so I'm moving that over, okay? That's what I'm doing there. And then, if you think about your tire as a clock, we're gonna do a five spoke. Put a line at about 10 o'clock and two o'clock, and then seven o'clock and four o'clock, and 12. And if you See how close that is to equal distance, which is pretty cool. And then I can just connect those to the center. Like that. Do the same here. 12, 10, 2, 7, 5. And then connect to the center. And then you can create uh, different kinds of designs from there. And once you have your five spoke, it's all up to you um, how you want that to look. So I can spend a lot more time on this, but I think um, as a first kind of uh, quick perspective ideation of a sports car, I've got a good start here. So there you have it. Uh, it's been my pleasure to show you a few tricks and tips on how to draw a car. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much from the College for Creative Studies. I'm Paul Snyder. Have a great day and good luck.